how am I doing on time? Okay, until they tell me to shut up, I'll keep talking. Quite simply, from my point of view, as an infrastructure expert, um, open source software scales and integrates and is much more of a pleasure to work with than commercial software. And again, I'm generalizing, but I do believe this is true in the general case. Yes, there are some commercial software companies that are a pleasure to work with. So I hear. Um, and there are some open source communities that have no clue how to manage change in their software. Um, by and large, those are the small ones. Those are the communities that are still growing. How do you fix that problem? Well, you participate in the community, you help them learn how to make things better. Um, I think if you look at any of the large open source communities, I think they've done a pretty good job of this. In spite of some of the incredibly fun to read flame wars on Perl 5 porters over the last few years, which I will, I have to admit, I, I quit a couple years ago, but I hear it's gotten really cordial and, and kind and loving now. Um, I believe that community's done a fantastic job of moving that product forward, and I look forward to Perl 6 and Perl 7 or 8 or whatever comes after that over the years or whatever replaces it, um, because I think those, that same group of people is going to continue to do a wonderful job supporting that product. Um, I think that uh, there are a lot of other open source communities that are doing um, an equally good job. The, <clears throat> the big difference, I, I guess, would be, oh, I forgot the other point. There's another important issue about you working in open source, and that's vendor risk management. Um, we've been repeatedly burned by investing in and making a strategic bet, strategic bet on a given commercial vendor I want to have them go out of business on us. And we're left holding some binaries we can't compile, we can't patch, we can't fix, we can't debug, and nowhere to go for support. Um, this is burnt. We've been burned. We're still I, on my Solaris desktop. I'm going to switch to Linux soon, I promise. On my Solaris desktop, I'm still running the Try2 Enterprise desktop code. And they've been out of business for almost two years. Now, fortunately, it's been pretty stable. But you know, if we go to upgrade the operating system and the underlying components that stuff uses, and we find bugs, well, we're burned. We have nowhere to turn to. With open source solution, if you are the last person on the planet using the software, you still got it. And you can still make those changes. Um, that's, really, that's a really important decision you have to make when you just go to make a strategic bet. When you buy a commercial software product, and you spend those millions of dollars, which in our case is always millions, um, then you have to realize that you are betting part of, you're placing a bet on the stability of that company going forward. And not only the stability of their company, but the stability of their product and that company's ability to keep moving that product forward. And when the company can't live with that challenge, you either have to go to, you hope, a competitor product that which you could replace it with. But we're all using a lot of technology out there where a given vendor has got a niche and no one's come up with a competitor for them. And when you bet on those products, you are betting on those firms. And that's a bet I think that we often don't think about, especially if it's a big three-letter company name behind it. Okay, I'm getting, getting, on the, getting close to the get Phil fired topic. I'll stay away from that. Um, I don't personally believe also that the statement that the managed development and ownership by a commercial company produces higher quality, better supported, better documented software. I think that is what the corporate software world would love us all to believe. I don't believe that's true in general either. Um, Perl has been, people complain about Perl because it has too much documentation as opposed to not enough. And by and large, the documentation that comes in Perl is kept up to date pretty well. Um, I'd say about a third of the bugs I report for the commercial products I use are documentation bugs. Um, missing things that are documented incorrectly or not. And trying to get a vendor to give you a patch for documentation is usually far harder than you need to make a patch to the code. Oh, that will do that in the next major release. When's that? Three years from now. OK. The releasing open source software is also, an, I think, an, another interesting one. Why do we? Why would a big evil corporation like us care about helping all you people out and releasing our software? All we want you to do is spend more money and buy more of our products. Okay, we're not in the software business, like I said. We're in the financial services business. If we develop a given piece of infrastructure software and we're the only ones that have all the expertise for it and it doesn't give us a direct competitive advantage, then that becomes a risk for us. All right. If the three or four gurus that wrote that code quit and go work for Merrill Lynch, well, now we're left holding the bag and no one to support the software. If we release it into the open source world and we get a community of people to share and use that software and it gets more widely accepted, that reduces our risk. You get free labor too, that's one I really like, okay? <laughs> I've been free labor for a lot of open source and we get that back. If the, you know, if there's a, we don't use, for example, um, we don't use HPUX, um, there's a few of the Unixes that we just don't have. Am I running out of time? Is that what you're hinting at? Shut up and finish? Okay, I'm almost done. <clears throat> and you know, we're not gonna do that port, but someone else can do it, they do it for us. And then that software gets even more widely accepted, and the risk for us is even lower. 
And a lot of times, people will fix bugs we can't figure out. They'll add features we want that we have not been high enough prior for us to add. Uh, in general, that's working out pretty good. And the other reason, and the reason that they love having people like me talk at this conference, although they really probably don't want to hear everything I said, was that it, it improves our image in this community. We are trying to participate in the open source community in a positive way. And we need to hire the best and brightest technologists, accepting resumes now. And you know, by having our name out there in a positive way in the open source world, that means we're going to get more and more of the creative and best and brightest people to come apply to us. I say that because I honestly believe that the open source community has the best and the brightest and the smartest developers anywhere on the planet. I think that's true categorically. I'm a little bit biased. All right, so I'm basically done. Um, in summary, I do believe that what's true at our firm to a certain degree is true at just about any other big company. Everybody out there is using open source in some way. They need to open up and admit it. They need to embrace it, and they need to, ooh, ooh, I was going to say extend, but <laughs> they need to embrace the use and accept it. And I think they need to realize that open source will continue to be a key part of, these tech of the technology you need to build a world-class enterprise like this. And now I'll shut up.